Another key thing that I thought was a profound statement in the book is happiness is love in action. Yeah. You and I both personally know Bob Waldinger, author of The Good Life and the current director of the Harvard study of adult aging. How can we use happiness and love and that study to articulate the importance of relationships and the love that we show others in activating happiness in ourselves? The Harvard study of adult development that Waldinger and company run, Bob Waldinger is an incredible guy. He's a psychoanalyst and psychiatrist at Massachusetts General Hospital in the Harvard Medical School. He's also a Zen Buddhist priest of all things. He's a really interesting guy. And for 30 years, he's been running this enormous study. It's an 85 year longitudinal study that started when men were in their teens all the way until death. There's a few of them are still alive, but man, they're really old. The study itself has only had three directors. So the directors have as much longevity practically as the participants in the study. Bob has been doing it for 30 years, and he's very clear on what actually brings happiness. Now, some people just get lucky. 50% of your happiness, your baseline mood is genetic, as it turns out. He had gloomy parents. It makes it a little bit harder. But if you have those gloomy genetics, which, by the way, I have, you need to work that much harder on your habits. The habits are basically sevenfold, where the seventh is by far the most important. The first few are pretty easy. They're about diet and exercise and smoking and drinking. That's really what the first four are about. So diet and exercise means that you're not going to be healthy and happy if you're always struggling with your health and making sure you have a healthy body weight and you exercise moderately is really important. None of this is new. Smoking is a really bad thing because Lifelong smokers, seven in 10 die of a smoking related illness, and they're really bad deaths. And drinking is a really interesting one because all of that about you should have two drinks a day, it's not true. It turns out that most of that is largely from a vested interest that sponsored the research and the newest research suggests that's too much. And then if you have any alcoholism in your family, you should stop drinking right now. And again, a lot of people don't want to hear that. Don't turn off the passion struck podcast right now, because I just said that. Okay. That's pretty obvious stuff, but then it gets more interesting because the last three, number one is you need a coping mechanism for your stress and anxiety. You need to talk to somebody. You need to have a way to deal with your stress. If you don't, you're going to have too much cortisol and stress hormones in your system, and it's going to hurt your life, your happiness, and your health. Second is you need lifelong learning. You need to be interested. Interest is one of the basic positive emotions. Why are people listening to the Passion Struck podcast? Because it's interesting and that gives people pleasure. There's a lot of neurophysiology that shows this. Be a lifelong learner, podcasts, books, all of it. And last but not least, number seven, this is the biggie. This is the one you can't miss. Happiness is love, full stop. For most of us, that means a happy marriage. But if you don't have that, close friendships. You need a happy marriage or close friendships. That's what you need. And you got to do the work. You don't just fall off a log and have a happy marriage. And you certainly don't keep up to date with your childhood or college buddies you don't work with or halfway across the country. You got to do the work if you're going to have that source of happiness, by far the most important of the seven.